So while I was in uh, prison, I had a lot of time to just basically think and study religion and that kind of thing. Now, this is the uh, Tree of Life. Now, interestingly enough, there's two versions of the Tree of Life. This one um, is from Dion Fortune's book, The Kabbalah, and it has paths going from Natsak to Malkuth and Hat to Malkuth. Now, the other uh, version of the Kabbalah, um, basically the Tree of Life is this one, where you don't have the paths there, but what you have is you have a path from uh, Baina to Hesed, and then from Hokba to Gavara. Now, on the Kabbalah, on the Tree of Life, as she presents it, the one, the path from Hok or the path from Baina to Chesed is known as the Secret Silent Path, and that's um, based on you know for initiatory experiences and whatnot. Now, on this one. It's outlined, but also what you have is you have the desert path, which is Hokma, which is wisdom, to Gavura, which is uh, strength, justice, that kind of thing. Now, the thing of it is, is from what you can, if you look into uh, more Jewish sources, the one that I'm showing you now is more accepted especially in terms of uh, Jewish Kabbalists, whereas this one is more accepted by uh, mainstream uh, esoterica, which basically, you know, gives you this version. But the thing of it is, is if you notice um, on this one, if you connect the lower, if you connect the five, can actually create a pentagram. Uh, now, because you, you're basically connecting it that way, there's all the connections. What's interesting is you can also connect the top five with another pentacle. And what you'll end up with is you'll end up with, uh, in some respects, the Star of David. Because instead of it going down to this one, Tephereth, you'll go up to Bina or up to uh, Keter. Um, I talk a lot about this kind of thing in my book. So when I when I get my book out, it's going to be um, talking quite a bit about spirituality, uh, sociology, psychology, the world as I see it, and uh, that kind of a thing. Now. Some of you may be sitting there and saying, well, you know, how does this apply to my life? Well, if you look at the aspects of the tree, the aspects of the different Sephiroth, you will notice certain archetypes, uh, and within those archetypes, personalities, and within those personalities, uh, they relate to how human beings behave. So, for example, say you're somebody who really values love, well then... Uh, Chesed is the one you're going to be more drawn to, and you have archetypes of Chesed. Now, interestingly enough, the middle one, Sephiroth, Tephereth, uh, basically represents the Savior, represents Jesus, the healer, sun gods, those types of entities. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty fascinating stuff, and it's basically a tool for self-knowledge. It's not, you know, somebody worshiping something outside themselves. All these things exist within you. And it's just up to you to basically seek them out. There's the Tephereth one. My writing was horrible, especially when I was in prison. Um, it's Asad, Malkuth is Earth. Um, so basically, you can kind of get a sense of basically... Uh, the inner world of a human being. Now, one of my favorite quotes by uh, Carl Jung, and I went ahead and put that up, was that uh, uh, 
you know, no tree it is said can grow to heaven unless it's reached reach down to hell. Well, being put in prison, <laughs> that was definitely hell. So now I'm reaching towards heaven. Have a great day.